Welcome back to the TST100 build. Uh, if you're new to the channel, then I'll give you a quick recap. We are building a custom 100cc two-stroke race bike, which has a custom engine and a custom chassis, custom everything. Uh, basically, the wheels and suspension and the cylinders are the only thing that aren't custom. And the gearbox, sorry. So if you haven't seen them, go jump on our YouTube channel and you can see all of the videos leading up to this. Uh, it's been a lot of work. So I'm going to take you along for the first ever startup of our TST100 custom Formula 4 prototype bike. Um, and then we're going to talk a bit about what's next. So I hope you like it. Cheers. When you hold a consistent one, that's okay. okay. That's right. Um, just set, set it to zero degrees on the... Yeah. So our primaries are going to become our secondaries, eh? Well... And then we'll end up buying no, some... No, we'll leave the your secondaries as they are, because they're different different types. But I'll have to buy some new, mm -hmm. some new smaller... So in here, I'm going to blow a bit of um, that seat foam, so the yeah. fuel tank, and then this one just lift it. So. Yeah. Because this bit here can... Did you just play it? Luckily, we don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we'll be doing is a bolt on part here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you did? Scalded. I'm gonna hide. Somebody's around the fridge again. Fucking can. Oh, you almost got that perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, bro. Sorry, just. Oh, fuck. Oh, we could have waited for a second. I missed it anyway. <laughs> Kyle's going. You two, you two, too busy arguing about fucking frame rates. Now you get some temp in it. Now you get some temp in it. It was, it was running. It was running. Uh, where is the water temperature? Uh, well, you got 82 so on it straight away. So it's not, yeah, it it's can't, not, yeah, it's not plugged in. Um, I actually think it needs more fuel. Yeah, I reckon so too. So I'm just going to give the whole time. You were away. at 40 when oh, it was really? running, like yeah. 37, 40. The spark plugs are loose, bro. I oh, know they are, that's fine. Plus. Do you want to take it down the road or need to be? Oh, yeah, I'm not worried about selling the temp. That's like something so funny. You were getting that. Yeah, 1.7 when you were like, oh, when I was wow, kind of like 60, 70 percent. Okay, cool. right, that makes sense. The plugs are very gently in, but yeah, they're in. Fine. Let's try it again. Where's that plug? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was out. It was out. <laughs> Now that first start went great, but we did encounter some electrical issues. We did figure it out in the end. Um, all it was, was the main relay inside the relay box was vibrating loose, and then it was breaking the connection for the main power for the bike. So we chased our tail for a while. We thought it was a crank trigger issue, but it turned out just to be the main relay. So we fixed that, put the bike back together, uh, and we'll give you a bit of a time lapse of us, you know, figuring it out and then fired it up again and man it, it ran so good also just to note there is no radiator on the bike we know that um it's okay we're not running it for very long so don't worry about it overheating but it will be water cooled with a radiator 
once we put it together finally. It's working! <laughs> right, start it up, hurry up, fucking. <laughs> Almost finished bike and it just ran so <laughs> we're obviously quite excited because uh, yeah we, we just plugged in a, a chat GPT tune basically <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and for the fueling and, and ignition and all that and then cranked it over and it, and it ran so I mean it's amazing to be honest the amount of work that has gone into this bike to, to get it to here is uh, like literally hundreds of hours and now we have a bike that runs what did we learn about the motor <laughs> what needs to be done still i mean bugger all really yeah yeah it's it's it runs uh we've got a lot of work to do with tuning we haven't implemented any of the uh the special tuning side of the efi that that we think that we're going to need to help with the two-stroke but so it's just running like a normal fuel injection at the moment like you would on any four-stroke and to be honest with you it's remarkable how well that it's currently working. Our injector sizes are way wrong. They're way too big. Um, that our <laughs> legit Luke said, <laughs> Kyle got the the initial tune based off some chat GPT numbers to give us just a starting table, um, and then it's just a bit of fudging. So real good first impressions. We we thought we'd be pissing around all night trying to just get it to like kind of run and you know maybe climb the revs a little bit. Well, we, it fired straight up, and apart from some little electrical gremlins that we figured out pretty quickly, it fired straight up, and then we, you know, literally straight to the rev limiter, <laughs> like, <laughs> like smooth as all of the bits are still on the inside, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So we know now that the three D printed crank cases obviously can handle the the rotational speed and and the the crank forces. We don't know if they can handle load yet, but we'll find out. It sounds amazing. And this is all like, it's all real early days. So put the smaller primary injectors in, get all the um, injector tuning for primaries and secondaries working. Uh, what else do we need to do before we go to the dyno, Glenn? So we've got quick shift up, auto blip down with this bike to implement. But the main one really is the fuel control for the transient fueling on the two stroke. So Kyle and I have been working pretty hard with a, what we think is a fairly novel fuel control strategy, which is just managing the so fueling control on two-stroke at wide open throttle or constant load, alpha, alpha N, which is TPS-based, easy. But we can already feel here when you, when you kind of get the fuel table close to right where the bike will run and rev, it's really laggy when you crack the throttle open, which is over-fueling when it's off the pipe. Um, so, so we've got we've got an initial uh, crack at the firmware yep. side of things. Uh, when we get to a dyno, it might be a case of doing some hacky stuff and <laughs> getting the firmware a bit closer. Yeah. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, you've got the the sort of code roughed yeah. out already, yeah. and we've we've bench, we've tested, bench, it. bench yeah. tested it, and it looks like it's doing what we think it should do. So it's going to be really uh, 
fuck around and find yeah. out if, yeah, yeah, if yeah. all the theories work. But uh, I couldn't be happier now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. We're, we've just been, uh, you know, firing it up and revving it up and then walking around the garage and finding an excuse to fire it up again because yeah. it's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> no one's done this crankcase like this before. This is a... This is a prototype engine. No one's built this before. It's not like we've assembled something that some Japanese engineer has designed. This bloke designed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it works. We we, we built everything here. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, there's a few there's a few little mechanical issues that we've popped up already that we'll have to see. Um, I think when machining the cases, I haven't got quite got the gear mesh between the primary gear and the clutch cracked. It's a bit tighter than it should be. So you'll probably hear, or you've probably already heard in the videos, there's a bit of a whine to it that it shouldn't have. So I need to, I'll wait and see, I'll just monitor it and see if I have any gear wear. Or well, the main thing is to see if there's any excess heat generation, wasting energy and just power. Um, if it does become a problem, then I'll, I'll have a, rather than remachine the cases, which is quite hard, I'll just manufacture a new gear yeah. with a smaller pitch circle. Um, so it's annoying, but not a... Not a not a showstopper. Yeah, these pipes on it at the moment. There are uh, these ones are simply for the initial startup and and basic tuning. They're very mild pipes. The port timing is extremely mild as well. Um, so when we go to the dyno for the first time, I'm not looking for power. I'm not expecting no. power. I, I really could care less about the power. The most important thing to me on the dyno is starting to learn what the motor wants for the fueling and and if our fueling strategy is going to actually do what we think it should do. Yeah, yeah. So next step is take it to the dyno and then get the oh, the quick shifter should be easy, but to get our auto blipper going, and we'll tell you a bit more about that later. It's quite a yeah interesting way that we're doing it because obviously we don't have e throttles, so we have a different technique to auto blip. Uh, we haven't actually used it yet, so we'll <laughs> tell you if it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all, it's a, it, yeah, in theory it's going to work good, but we have no idea. Yeah, and then um, um, GPS lap timing and stuff yep. like that data logging yep. Yep. yeah but no next video will probably be us on the dyno yeah. don't expect big horsepower numbers like glenn said everything's really mild get it tuned so it runs well like this as a as a mild two-stroke engine and then we're gonna rip into it and make some proper horsepower yeah cool cheers guys Fuck it. Yeah. shed skid yeah <laughs> yeah and then a burnout <laughs>